Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to See Jenny Cruise. This is our sailing on the Carnival Celebration, the second LNG ship in North America. She launched in November of 2022, but this is our first opportunity to get on this large ship, 183,000 gross tons, an Excel class. We're excited. We didn't know whether we were going to be at Terminal D or Terminal F, couldn't figure out uh, anything online to tell us, so our Uber driver drove around until we passed D. The ship wasn't there, so we went to F. This is our second time in Miami, and if you haven't been there, it is impressive. They have quite the operation with so many ships leaving. And inside the terminal, everything went well and smooth. They have a good process. I have to say, though, they are a lot friendlier in Galveston. So we're about to get on the Carnival Celebration. She holds 5,374 passengers, but if you fill on the third and fourth bunks, you get 6,500. That is massive for us. We're not used to being on ships that large, but we're looking forward to trying this out. 1,735 crew, that is a lot. So this is gonna be a good ship, and for us, it's the first Excel class we've been on. So we've had over 20 plus Carnival ships we've been on. Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Disney, some other ones. This is really a different layout. We're going to show this to you as we go along. So one of the things I was surprised by, uh, as we boarded actually, I found out that we weren't going to be able to go to our cabin early. Uh, Diamond and Platinum Cruisers in other ports may be familiar. You're looking forward to being able to take your stuff to your cabin and drop it off. Well, not on the Sailing for Carnival celebration. Now I understand that they had so many platinum and diamond sailing uh, cruisers on this time. They weren't able to allow some of those benefits. So I understand it, but having, I wish I'd known early because I would have picked a later boarding time and I would have made some other arrangements in terms of what I was carrying on with me. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is coming into Miami, we always carry on the bottle of wine per adult that you're allowed to bring on board and some soft drinks and we use it in our carry on, which is what the instructions tell you to do. And in Miami, they didn't check. In Galveston and other ports, they take you to the side, you have to show them that it's wine. Well, it could have been any bottle in there. Anyway, I'm not saying you should count on it, but I was a surprised. Now here we're about to see a sign with our muster station assignment on it. And you, we have our boarding pass in our hand because now that you get your cabin key card in the slot by your cabin, you don't ha know what your muster station is except for that piece of paper in your hand. So make sure you hold on to it. Now we're gonna walk down, you come in on deck six. And I don't know if you saw it back there. We just went by it, that illuminated clock on the floor. I like seeing that. You'll see that where you board and exit the ship. And here we're walking by punch liners. And so you're getting the layout of the ship. As we go forward in this tour, we're gonna have the map show up for you. And here though, we're walking to get to our muster station. That's the first thing we do when we board a carnival ship. We go straight to it so we get our name checked off and we're not the people that are holding up everything up. So we were at A6, which was right around by the spa on sick, headed towards the Grand Spectrum Theater, which was where our muster station was going to be. Now, we have found we really like the way the muster is done now on Carnival ships and some other cruise lines as well. Since the pandemic, that's one of the improvements that we've experienced. It's a lot easier. Um, having said that, uh, this was a really unusual experience for us. It was a little bit of a line getting up to the staff person where we show our card. Well, I'm sorry, show our boarding pass where they scan the QR code. And then we were inside the theater and which is a nice look up. Uh, you can go, you get in on six, but it also exits on seven. But when we entered the staff person doing the muster drill really was just about finished. And so we could have sat through the next presentation and that might be a good idea if you've never done it before. But I have a new cruiser tip for you on Carnival, and I think most other lines we've been on, they're going to continue to show this cruise presentation on the muster drill and safety drill throughout your cruise. It's going to be on the TV that you can see in your cabin. And it is a good idea. We, we usually take another look at it just to be sure. Anyway, here we exited onto deck seven, which is right up by the elevators. 
but rather than try to get on an elevator, we only had one floor to go up to get to deck eight and the Havana cabins. Here we're going into 8223, which is a Havana balcony cabin. And on most of the ships now, the newer ships, you have to put a cabin key in the slot for the uh, right underneath the air conditioning controls for the lights to stay on more than about five minutes and to keep the AC working the whole time. Now, when I just did there, I put in the cabin key. However, after this, I go back and I put in a Royal Caribbean cabin key. I always think that's kind of funny, but you could use a library card or something else. You just don't want anything that has your uh, credit card information on it or anything like that. I like the decor of the celebration. Um, I love these newer ships, the carnival ships, a lot better than the older ones. Um, these TVs, though, it's always interesting to me. They're they're on the wall facing the bed, which is fine because they don't move at all. So if you're sitting over on the couch, that didn't work. And the sliding glass doors. We like the sliding glass doors on these cabins. This is really more of a patio than a balcony. It's a little bigger and it has a swing. We really like that and it has a long chase lounge. Now here's our first view of Miami from the cruise ship and from the port. This cabin, 8223, this balcony is at the end of the row here on the starboard side of the ship. And I have to say it was nice. It was, I liked not having somebody directly on both sides of us. It really is pretty quiet during the day. Um, I will say though, there was a little bit of sound from whatever, some kind of engine thing on the right hand side of this cabin as we're walking back in but really didn't notice it with the sound of the sea and the ocean. The other plus to these Havana balcony cabins is that you have access to the Havana outside bar and also to the pool there. It's a small pool, but it's nice. And I just showed you that bench there at the desk and it has some a place where you can put things inside. I use that, like these drawers, they're soft clothes drawers. And there's the little ice cooler or cooler, it doesn't, it, it doesn't keep ice in there, but it does keep things chilled. I'm gonna come back and show you a picture. Now here are these nice, I really do like the way the closets are set up, these split closets so you can have long hanging things or short things. I did have trouble with this latch on this shelf, but I like the idea of being able to fold it up or bring it down. I just could never get this one down. But overall, I really like the new design on these closets. And I like how they have, I'm gonna show you these metal drawers that pull out. Those are really handy, I think. You see the safe is right above it. And then there's another place to hang clothes there. And then this pull out drawer at the bottom, that was really convenient for shoes. So I really like how this is set up. Now we're gonna take a look at the bathroom here in just a second. Um, this, I, I know I didn't actually do the square footage, I think it's a little smaller, maybe, I don't know. It seems like it's a little smaller, but let me tell you the plus, there's no shower curtain. Yay, Carnival, it was about time. And the other thing I noticed was that in the older Carnival ships we've been on, the Freedom Class and others, the Vista even, the shower it has a like a massage shower type where you can adjust the spray, not on this one. It wasn't the strongest shower, but you can always go to the one in the spa, I guess. I like these handy little lights right next to the bed and you have the USB ports there as well. And look right here on the desk, is this great? What a bank, I didn't even need to bring that extender thing that I usually have to have a few more outlets. Make sure you don't bring a surge protector though. That's a tip for you new cruisers. Can't use surge protectors on a cruise ship. You can have one of those extenders that has multiple plugs, it just can't be a surge protector. So back in the bathroom, they only gave us two sets of towels. We asked for more, they gave us more. But behind those towels right there, there's actually a little cabinet underneath that sink with some more storage space. And here's the cooler once we had it full. I wanted you to see, it actually held more than I thought it would. You could get two bottles of wine, or here we have a bottle of wine and a big bottle of water, plus some sodas, some other things that we put in there. It worked okay. Anyway, if you need to keep ice though or something cold, use that little bucket and you can always ask your room steward for help with that. So our son came with us and he was in cabin 8245, which is an inside Havana cabin. And the plus side here is you get all the benefits of being in the Havana cabins, which again is that outside area. Right outside the Havana bar, there's the little pool area and another bar area that is closed to anyone except Havana cabin guests during the day. I believe in the evening you can go out that area, but there's still a 
There's a walkway that's closed off without a key on the outside balcony area. You can't get through without a Havana cabin suite key. So we liked that. Now you noticed we were getting in this cabin. My son's coming in. Here's this inside Havana cabin. And I mean, it's nicely uh, put together. Same desk area, same vanity area, same closet, same bathroom, but there's not a lot of space on either side of that bed. And just keep that in mind, there's not like a chair or another couch or any other sit seating area there. But like I said, it gives you all the same benefits. In fact, there's the robe uh, that's in the cabin. They forgot to give us the robes, but they gave one to my son. But you know what? I didn't even think about it till the end of the cruise, so I never asked. So the same closets as we have in our balcony cabin and the same desk area, same drawers, nice decor. And here's the same cooler, it's just underneath the TV. And here's a little something our room steward left us one day. You think he was trying to tell us something? <laughs> We're on deck six now at the back of the ship that's aft on the port side. This is the Carnival restaurant and this is where assigned seating is going to be. And this model is of the Carnival from 1976. It was uh, taken out of service in 2009. You're going to see a lot of mementos of the history of Carnival throughout the decades on the celebration. It's one of the things you kind of have to know about to go looking for these mementos, but we're going to point them out on this ship tour for you. So we're going to continue on deck six and walk through. See the portholes? Isn't this neat? It's like an old carnival ship. And here, this is the engine telegraph control, and this is from the TSS Carnival from 1955. I just I think that's awesome first of all I didn't know what an engine telegraph was but all ahead full I understood so here we are at the middle bank of elevators and we're gonna now see the carnival celebration from 2022 and the portholes represent a different decade in the history of carnival and those show up right across from the lovely Jubilee bar the Golden Jubilee and although we never had a drink here, we really did enjoy looking at it. It's beautiful. And those blueprints on the top are really neat. And here is the Rolls Royce from the Ecstasy. If you ever sailed on her, this is a 1934 Rolls Royce and it was a nice uh, to see her now aboard the Carnival Celebration. And she is just as you enter deck six here at the gateway. You're, there's another ATM there, by the way, we just saw quickly. We're now gonna be here right at Cherry on Top where you can stop in to get some candy if you have a sweet tooth. And that's right across from Celebration Central. We'll be talking a lot about this. We're on the bottom level, deck six, by this really great Java Blue Cafe, or Blue Java Cafe. A lot more seating options. And here's the Tropical Bar. That's from the Carnival Tropical ship from 1982. And you can also, at the Blue Java, get just coffee there, it's coffee service. A stairway leading up to deck seven. And here we are walking in the hallway. We're going to come up here on your left. You're going to see the piano bar. We usually spend at least one evening, maybe a couple of evenings uh, at the piano bar. We did this trip sailing as well. Um, you know, some sailings, it's a lot better than others. Let me show you this relief here of the beautiful Carnival Celebration. Love how they've put the ship coins here. These are from 2022 and celebrate the 50 years of Carnival. And we're gonna look forward to seeing those also on the Jubilee. And some of the ship coins from other Carnival ships you'll find in the walkway around the ship. Now here we are at the gym. And so Cloud9 Gem, and it's a lot smaller than on some of the older ships, but it has all the equipment that you need, I think. And so also you can find those exercise classes. Some of those require an extra fee. Now we're looking back here now at the spa on six, which we saw when we first boarded the ship and the hallway that leads back to the Grand Spectrum Theater. So you can access the theater on deck six and deck seven coming back around past the elevators to the Punchliner Comedy Club. We are now going to walk back around and be on the other side of Celebration Central. And here you're going to see the other side of the Tropical Bar. So I love this layout. 
so we're now back about midship at the gateway and this is where these posters the travel posters are on one side some of them are led posters i think they're really neat but across from those posters are these booths and i wanted to point this out make this a cruiser tip because on the carnival celebrations the first time i've seen these booths we're going to see something similar on deck seven where you could have seven eight people sitting in this booth area um, it's really neat to have those special areas there that we normally wouldn't have now here we are at the latitudes bar this is a really popular place and it has that travel theme and they usually have a group playing music there as we walk into emeralds which we're going to have another a uh, video for you where we tell you about all the places we ate on Carnival Celebration. We also ate here. Um, this is a self-service place where you walk up and then carry your food, uh, or they'll bring you your food, but you come up and order your food here at the, at the register. And then here is this map. I love this map. It has the date and time at the top. I just think it's a pretty map. And then here we are at the Carnival Kitchen. We were unable to get in for any of these classes, but it's towards the back of the ship on the port, uh, starboard side. And we're going to be heading right now to the Festival Restaurant. And this on deck six is where you would come in usually for the anytime dining and where you check in. Now, let me tell you, if you want to get in, say on elegant evening, that was a 90 minute wait so make sure you plan accordingly but it's a two-story and we're going to show you the upper level which would be on deck seven here later but we enjoyed here we are now on deck seven at the festival restaurant and we enjoyed eating here a couple of times mainly for brunch so throughout the cruise uh, you still would check in using the carnival hub if you're going to come eat here if you have any time dining and then they also have some assigned dining also at the festival restaurant so it's a little different i mean they still have this beautiful decor for the upstairs and the downstairs which is familiar so i like the decor but i'm not sure about the way the layout worked we felt a little separated now this is the fahrenheit steakhouse and we usually eat here at least once during a cruise i love the bar it's very nice there it makes it more accessible for people who aren't even eating at the steakhouse this goes right back into the area called the gateway again and here you're going to see more of these booths i was talking about but look at this cool ceiling so we can look down on six and that's emeralds and you see those cool panels across they change throughout the day with different um area different themes displayed and then to right and then there's the latitudes bar so we're looking down on that and then here's the alchemy bar and so i have to say this wasn't the best uh, experience at alchemy for me but um we do enjoy usually visiting at least a few times during the cruise and we're coming up on the limelight lounge so there's a beautiful staircase here there's several of these staircases going along six and seven and here you see, again the latitude bar and you see this really cool ceiling along with those big led panels and there's a lot of seating here on deck seven along where you can look down on six and so you get yourself a nice little cocktail either from in the evenings uh, from the alchemy bar or from fahrenheit 555 that's a nice place to hang out and then here we have some of the fun shops and we're heading around now to carnival uh, celebrations central and then here you're going to have where we have this three-story a bank of windows and then also the theater area where people it's very busy in the evenings uh, even when there's not a show there is a, usually a lot of this is a hub of activity and so it's a nice place but if you want to see a show you're going to want to show up a good 30 minutes in advance possibly if you want a good seat maybe even earlier because it fills up because of all the activity but i do like it it's a cool area a uh, nice background in the back even during the day and they have other events going on here so here again we're on deck seven at this point so you have those famous staircases that you can get your pictures on a uh, cool looking settee over here people were taking pictures on but this is one of the entrances to the empress casino and we're going to walk through the casino we were in port the day we took this video and so there's no one in here but um, I like the new setup with the casinos. It makes it a lot easier for people who don't want to be there to not have to walk through it because there are other ways to get through on deck seven. 
namely going through uh, Carnival Central or Celebration Central would have been one way to walk through on deck seven and not go through the casino. And so they have it separated out where you come through um, and there's going to be another staircase that's going to lead up to deck eight or of course you deck eight to come down and that would be right here is the staircase I'm talking about. And they have it closed off here, but there's no smoking on this side. We're on the port side at this point and no smoking on this side of the casino. It's going to be on the starboard side. Here's the bar. And we did come in here a few evenings or walked through to see what was happening. And it's as popular as it usually is. So I would say it was busy every time we walked through. One of the things I come to the casino for is to use the ATM and the bill changers. I'm walking by it, but we're going to come back and show that to you again in a moment. Because here we are now, Deck 7, Grand Spectrum Theater. And this is where some of the other big shows are going to be seen. And also we saw comedians here in the late night when the other... Um, when the punchliner was busy. On um, this particular day, we were coming through, like I said, we were in port, and when we opened up the door, oop, rehearsals were going on. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. So we backed out. So coming back on deck seven at the Empress Casino, we're here at the bank of elevators at the front of the ship, at the bow, deck seven, and on the other side is going to be the Empress Casino, and on this side, there was smoking allowed, and that was on the starboard side. And I like how that was separated. I think that's the best solution for everyone. Coming through the casino, normally I wouldn't have come through on this side, but I want to show you this really beautiful bar that's kind of tucked out of the way. And I don't know if I'm going to know how to pronounce this correctly, but when you walk through, it's the Aquaria Bar. And this is right off of Carnival Cent I mean Celebration Central, and it has the most beautiful blue tile. And I, I came back through here several times. So I never did have a beverage here, but I was so impressed with the ocean themed glass that uh, came from murals that were on the Carnival Victory. And they repurposed that glass. And I have to say, it is some of the most beautiful tile I've ever seen. I really enjoyed it. And all these LED panels up above. So you have this multiple story uh, backdrop. And I just obviously really liked that glass tile. Okay, so after admiring the beautiful tile, we're now going to head to deck eight. We're at the back of the ship. We're at aft, at, right at the patio pool. And this nice area, it's interesting how it seems so open up above, even though it's on deck eight, and there's a lot more decks above you. But the way they've built the ship, you feel like you're in a big open space. In the afternoons on sea days, the Pig and Anchor here has a buffet line outside. You can also go through those doors to get inside to Guy's Pig and Anchor. We'll walk through there in just a moment. So here's the pool. The staff person was getting ready for the day, the patio pool. And this whole patio area, there's a couple of uh, TVs that you can't see right now. We actually watched a football game outside uh, when the inside was too crowded to find a spot. So the patio is a nice area to hang out on port days when it's nice weather or on sea days as well. Here are the two spa pools and farther down there is another bar area called the watering hole. So we're going to, here's the TV screens I was telling you about. We're going to go back in right across from the pool is where you go into Guy's Pig and Anchor on the left and then on the right is the Heroes Tribute Lounge and during the day this is a busy area I would say but also because they have a large screen TV over there and ice cream. Everybody wants to know where the ice cream is. Here it is on this truck. Isn't this cute? And so we were here several times. I like how they do this tribute for the veterans. And we'll talk about the veterans celebration later. Never saw any beer in there, but we saw some beer served from there. And then here's one of the fun shops that has... Um, branded merchandise and then we're walking right through guest services say overall they handled that pretty well it wasn't only on you know the first day it gets backed up and then here's the back elevators we just passed that bank of elevators and this is carnival adventures where you can do shore excursions and then here's a cool another little photo opportunity chill and tropical this is a stairwell that goes down and that's a nice place here's rudy's sea grill we had dinner here one night. We're going to have another video for you to watch where we're going to show all the different places where we ate a boat at the Carnival Celebration. We liked this one. So right next to Rudy's Sea 
grill, you're going to find the Deco Deli. And this had everyone I heard really enjoyed it. We enjoyed it some sandwiches here once. We enjoyed it. And right next to that is Miami Slice, which is the pizza place. The hours were not as late as we're used to on some of the other carnival ships, but there's a lot of seating here and it was indoors. And there's something to be said for that because sometimes you just get really muggy standing in line trying to get a piece of pizza out on the outside deck. But this was a very popular place. We saw lots of lines here. And we're going to be coming up now on 820 Biscayne. And so we have this bar here on our right. And this is 820 Biscayne. And I like the sign we're going to show you here in a moment. There's this big Miami sign right outside El Capitano, the Italian restaurant. And then a lot of people would line up over here and get their pictures taken. I think they did a great job of setting up all these places that you could take pictures you didn't have to wait till they had the photographers out either you could do it with your group and so um, over here now I gotta say I if maybe it wasn't but it seems like the largest pixels gallery I've ever seen there were so many terminals here we never saw it where it was always so busy even at the really busy periods like the last night of the cruise my goodness and then here's the middle bank of elevators that's right over here to the side and uh, like I said, we're still looking at pixels. Can you imagine? It's a huge area. And it leads you right back up again to Celebration Central, which is the hub. This is definitely the hub of the ship. And another pretty stairwell will come around to see that. And then if, again, you wanted to watch a show, you need to come book. So we were on deck six before. Now we're on deck, deck seven we saw. And now we're at the top on deck eight. And so we're looking down at this view here and you can still see the seats that are on the floor. And it really is a great theater area. Now, we were disappointed one evening when they couldn't have the show because of the conditions at sea and that's understandable. I want to say though, I also thought it was really hard to get a seat here in the evenings and they would pull the chairs over we're going to walk over from bonsai sushi they'd pull chair people would pull them over and it was just it was hard to get through deck eight and deck seven especially and so i would say i like it but maybe come up with another way for some of the seating i'm not sure what the answer is to that Here's a couple of shops we're gonna walk by where they sell watches and jewelry, the Effie store, and they had some charms that they would give away there. So deck eight is where you're going to have bonsai sushi and teppanyaki. And here is where you're going to hope to get a seat for a show. And let us show you the one evening we made it through. We didn't get seats, but we were able to catch part of this show. And I thought, it was done well, it was produced well. Uh, you could, of course, hear the music from everywhere. And I like the idea of having it a more open space than when you have in the theater. But like I said, it was really hard to get seats. So kind of mixed bag there. Um, we're gonna walk on past that now and show you again the tempanyaki. We did eat there one evening and we enjoyed it very much. It fills up, so you have to make reservations in advance, and it's about $50 a person, so you want to know that you're going to enjoy it, and we did. Bonsai Sushi is this, I love the view outside, but this is probably the largest one. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's the largest one we've been to before. Uh, they have more of a, a larger footprint, and what a view, look at that. <laughs> I wish we could have eaten there actually during the day. That was St. Thomas. It was such a beautiful view from the ship. So we're coming back out on deck eight we're gonna leave bonsai sushi go past teppanyaki take another look inside and walk around and as we pass central again celebration central again and the funnel we're gonna see that beautiful aquaria bar again those pretty led screens so I was really impressed with these three-story views like this. It's similar to when we used to walk into the older ships and they'd have that great big atrium. So they have like smaller snippets of atriums in different areas around Celebration Central. Now here's the Havana bar. We're not gonna go through it now. We're gonna walk around it and walk towards the elevators. We're gonna pass Chebang where we enjoyed a dinner. Some people weren't as thrilled with it. We enjoyed it very much. And we'll talk about that in our other video. So we were deck eight front elevators and we jumped forward. So we're walking 
back through the hallway from the Havana cabins, walking towards the bar. And what did you see? You walk down this long hallway inside, but when you come right down this ramp, there's a step going up where you can go outside. Here we are, those ele same elevators. Now we're gonna walk into the Havana bar and this is where they have lively bands in the evening and dancing, but also during the day, they might have a dance class or they'll have trivia, all these great little areas to sit. I love those rocking chairs. Wish they had them outside. So we're going to leave the Havana cabin area and the bar and we're getting on the elevators and we've made it to deck 16. All those elevator floors in between, we skipped because they're all cabins. So decks nine, through deck 15 are nothing but cabins. And so here we are on the Lido deck finally, and it is a busy sea day now that we're walking through. This will look familiar to some of you. And here's the blue iguana and the line that you're used to. And we're gonna walk around. You see the big screen up there where you can watch the movies in the evenings and try to watch it during the day. And here's the two-story Red Frog Tiki Bar. And so this was a, a fun area. A lot of people here usually during the day on both decks. We're going to walk through another little TV area there, which is interesting. They had so many of those TV screens around. Walking into the buffet area, there's a place to wash your hands. That's a good idea. And I like how they've set up the decor here. Putting those Louvre door looking dividers there, I think maybe helped a little bit with the noise and helped section it up. It wasn't quite as overwhelming as sometimes the Lido buffet area can be having these little stations helped a little bit more break it up and it helped the seating area at least it didn't feel as crowded as it as it was so we're walking through these doors we're at the back of deck 16 back in the aft area of the ship and we're at big chicken so the short version of shack's big chicken is it's worth coming by. I would suggest lunch versus breakfast and we'll talk more about that in our video where we talk about all the different places we ate on the carnival celebration because there were quite a few choices, more choices than we could get done in a week. And so we enjoyed, we thought we should make that a separate video. So we're back here in the Lido Marketplace walking through those uh, high bar areas for seating. I know that works for some people. It doesn't work for people of my height. Here is one of those hallway areas where they have the buffet continues going from starboard to port side on the ship or port to starboard. And uh, it, I guess that does help with some of the traffic flow. And of course, being able to have the buffet on both sides like they normally do, but it being a bigger area, they were able to accommodate even more people. And so here's the same side, uh, same thing we saw before, but now there's food out and the typical Typical breakfast. I will say it was hard to find the bacon. They had the omelet station, but it, it, usually you can find bacon and then all the other. Find your pancake syrup with the ketchup and the mustard. Just tell you, we took a minute to look for that as well. Anyway, so we're now walking back out of the Lido Marketplace and we're walking back out onto the Lido deck where we, the pool is and there's bathrooms right outside, usually on both sides too of Lido Marketplace, you'll find restrooms. And so there's the Red Frog Tiki Bar again. You can see that we're on deck 16. That's deck 17 up there. And we're walking across the Lido deck. This day we found all the towel animals out. The staff must work really hard to put all of those together. And it's fun watching them all like the parade of towel animals. Here we're coming around to Street Eats, which is a new thing again. I've enjoyed, we enjoyed trying it. It's, it's busy, but not too busy. Steam Dream, where they have the dumplings and sizzle today. They're made to look up like uh, food trucks and time fries where they had french fries. And here at the Seafood Shack, that costs extra. And now we're at the Blue Iguana, where you can have your breakfast burrito or a burrito at lunchtime or a taco bowl. Okay, so let's go to deck 17. Here's where you will find Club O2 and Circle C and also Guy's Burger Joint, which we missed this trip altogether. We made it to the Red Frog Tiki Bar, but listen, if you're looking for the presidential suite, you're gonna find it on deck 17. 
So we're on deck 18 now, and you can see the ride for the Carnival Bolt going around. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the Waterworks. Carnival Waterworks is here, and guess what else is here? The Jogging Track. Anybody see a conflict with that? Jogging Track right next to Waterworks running water interesting combo okay so we pass the guy scratching his back that's where you can go up the stairs for the bolt we rode that you you book it through the carnival hub app it's fifteen dollars a person and sometimes it doesn't make because of the weather but we enjoyed it it was fun these clamshells here are for sunning and here again we're on the jog path is what we're walking around this is the sports court here where people play basketball, maybe even dodgeball. They have uh, soccer nets also, so lots of different activities. Keep the balls in that netted area. And up above is the ropes course. And so that's fun for all ages. There's an easy path and a harder path. Guess which one I go on? Definitely the easy one. Here's the ultimate playground where you can play ping pong, cornhole, and foosball. Here we are looking over at the Lido deck and the main pool. We're now behind the main screen that you see on the Lido deck. You can usually hear the sound here pretty good. These double doors open up into the elevators midship for the 18th floor. And as we follow back around on this jogging path, you'll see the stairs that lead up to the ropes course. You have to be 48 inches tall in order to go up. I liked the way this sign read. And we're walking back around and you can see the sports court. As I mentioned, there's basketball and sometimes you'll see a game of dodgeball. And the bolt ride is above our head. We never did capture it on video. I was disappointed about that. But sometimes out at sea, it was too windy for the ropes course and the bolt for that matter. More clamshells here around the funnel and we're coming back up on the waterworks again. I'm going to show you this sign. It's the jogging track. Seven laps equals one mile. So my final reminder, if you're a jogger or you like a brisk walk, please consider doing it first thing in the morning because once the day is gone and the kids are enjoying this great waterworks area, you're going to see the warning slippery when wet and it's going to be wet. <laughs> So anyway, I love the waterworks. Hope the kids enjoy it. But I think this was a design flaw. I really do. So here's the little putt-putt area, the miniature golf. We saw a lot of families and people enjoying this area. Okay, so we've gone forward now on deck 18. Great view, isn't it? And this is the Serenity area, the adult-only area on the Carnival ship. And they have a lot of loungers and some clamshells to enjoy. The thing that's unique on this Excel class ship is that in addition to the sun areas that are popular on lots of different carnival ships, they have a swimming pool, a small swimming pool in the very center that has a lot more shade. And if you look up above, we'll see deck 19 up there. That's the loft 19 area where that flag is not cooperating on this blustery day. Good view of the pool though. And the cabanas on Loft 19, we probably won't get to see them unless we make it to an Excel suite someday. Also on Deck 19 at the very back of the ship is the Bolt Roller Coaster. Use your Carnival Hub app, pay $15 a person and schedule your ride. And then what we were just looking at, the front of the ship is Loft 19 Cabanas and Pool for those Excel suites or paying extra. I wanted to show quickly the Cove balconies a great class of balcony if you want to have a good view of the water line. Let us know down below, comment if you've stayed in one of these cove balconies before. And the other balcony I wanna show you provides a little bit more space and they show on decks nine and above and we're gonna have one like this on the Jubilee and we'll tell you about it when we come back in June. Before we leave, I wanna show you military appreciation, something Carnival does well and no one better than Lee, your cruise director. Differences, those rivalries aside at this event and we're going to celebrate each other equally but if I'm honest with you I, I think that's a bit boring so what we're going to do is we're going to have a competition <laughs> I'm going to inside a little friendly competition <laughs> I mean I mean that was that was very really loud that was okay maybe you're better singers <laughs> Let's 
veteran, you love a veteran, or you just respect a veteran, come join us at the next Military Appreciation. And Lee, your cruise director, he really was that great. Thank you, Carnival. So now we're at the end of our journey. We're back in Miami at the port. The worst part of any cruise is having to leave the ship. Can't complain. We, our thanks to Carnival and all the staff who helped us. We liked this Havana balcony. We enjoyed the swing and the chase lounges, but more than anything, this view. Can't get enough of it. If you would please like and subscribe right now, we're going to have a carnival celebration video on the restaurants we enjoy and the ports we visited. I would love to help you with your next cruise. I enjoy helping families and individuals find just the right sailing for them. So if you will comment below or reach me directly, I would love to help you with that. Also, we're going to be on the Jubilee in June, and we want to share that information with you. Anything in particular you're looking for, let me know. Galveston's our specialty. Until then, fair weather and following seas.